Scientists have discovered that visual clutter takes up mental space. Every item in sight is another piece of information that your brain must deal with. Studies have shown that untidy surroundings often increase stress and anxiety. For most people, simplifying and streamlining their environment can lead to more productivity and improvements in mental and physical health. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this month's edition of Rural America Live with AARP. I'm Christina Loren. Why is it that getting rid of stuff is so hard? We'll explore that question in detail tonight. And estate sales expert Sheila Whitlock, she's going to join us a little bit later on with tips on how you may be able to make a little bit of money on all the stuff that you and your family don't want or can do without. You're a big part of this show. We welcome you into this conversation every single month. We're gonna open up our phone lines in just a few moments. Our question of the month is, do you have a tip for getting rid of the stuff your kids don't want? We even invite you to share the challenges of decluttering with us tonight. We want to involve you in this conversation because you could be a winner tonight. We're giving away a high quality carry all tote to five random lucky on air callers and it could be you. As a friendly reminder, you don't need to be a member of AARP or over the age of 50 to win, but in order to be fair, you can only win one time each calendar year. We want to let those who are winners tonight know that AARP will call you back using the number that you called from. It won't be tonight, but they're going to give you a call in the next few days to confirm your mailing address. If you're a past winner and you have not received your cooler just yet, be sure to return their call and provide a shipping address as a bonus. AARP covers all of the shipping costs. So what are you waiting for? Get your questions and comments ready to go. New this year, if you're not a lucky winner tonight on air, you can enter our AARP's second chance sweepstakes. You can do so two different ways. You can either scan that QR code you see right there on your screen or visit aarp.org slash AARP live. You can even do it after the show. An additional carry-all tote will be given away each month with the winner announced during next month's program. There are rules that apply, and same deal, you can only win one time in a calendar year. We will announce last month's second chance winner a little bit later on in tonight's show. Without further ado, we're going to open up our phone lines right now. The number is 877-283-7570. Join the conversation. We're ready to take your calls. And now we get to welcome back some familiar faces from AARP, Friends of Rural America. AARP Vermont State Director Greg Marshallden is back with us. And AARP Iowa State Director Brad Anderson is with us. Welcome back, gentlemen. Are you excited about tonight's topic? Always good to be here. <laughs> this is my favorite right? show. It's my favorite show of the year. Is I love it? the decluttering yeah, show. Yeah, we're back at it. Yeah. We did it last year. We demanded uh, <laughs> that we be asked back to do it again this year. You know, I think that Brad is a fan because he's really good at decluttering. I myself am not, so this might not be my favorite topic of the year because it does nothing but instill guilt into me. I'm not the only one, though, and so I can't wait to hear your tips, Brad. Greg, we love having you on. Thanks. Decluttering, streamlining, uh, streamlining and simplifying. That's the topic tonight. I'm sure there are many out there who can use some tips and tricks to make their homes a little bit more organized. As people acquire things, this is actually psychological. Talk a little bit why it can become harder and harder to say, I just don't need this anymore. Right. Well, look, as we get older, we collect more things. And in fact, we collect a lot more things. And then you get attached to them. I feel that way about some of the stuff around my house, too. And then it becomes sentimental, and it becomes hard to part with them, and there becomes a real emotional attachment to things or items or whatever they might be. But there's something about this that we know about, and um, it's this thing called the endowment effect. Mm. And i would never heard of this, but there's been some <laughs> serious studies done uh, where people have asked, you know, how much would they be willing to pay for, let's say, uh, extra leg room um, if they're going on an airplane ride to visit a relative or go on vacation? The number that came up, the average number that came up was $12, which seems like, okay, that's a pretty fair deal. But then, <clears throat> excuse me, when those respondents were asked, how much would you sell that for? The average price was $38. Whoa. So this gets to the fact that once you own it and become attached to it, you prescribe it more value. Uh -huh. So kind of strange, but an interesting way to sort of think about stuff like that. So the endowment effect is really two things. Number one, it's the tendency to overvalue things that we own. So if we own it, it must be worth a lot. 
The second thing is, we feel the pain of losing something more strongly than the pleasure of gaining something. Huh. And so these things, when you hear them out loud, they sound simple, but if you're not sort of thinking about it this way, um, it's hard to figure out how you might do without some of this stuff. It's interesting. It's like news. Um, nobody wants yeah. to just watch good news. But, yeah. They want to find out about the bad things that are happening. It's so interesting how yeah. our minds work. And Brad, how do we fight this endowment effect? How can we step back and devalue the items that tend to pile up? Well, Greg talked about those sentimental items, and we've all got sentimental items. I, to prepare for this show, I was taking a look at my 1985 Topps baseball card set. Oh. So this, I paid, I paid $95 for this in the mid 80s with my own lawn mowing money, right? And I was convinced that this baseball card set was going to make me a wealthy man. So the other day I Googled how much it's worth, $119. Oh. I made $24 since the mid 80s. I think it's time to let it go, you know? And so there are a lot of ways to fight this endowment effect. So let's go through a couple ways right now. Um, so there's number one is how much would I pay for this if I didn't already own it? So I would not pay anything for a 1985 Tom's baseball card <laughs> set, which tells me I don't need it, right? Which makes it easy to get rid of. Uh, secondly is how much do you really need the item, right? And so again, going back to the set, I, I don't need it at all. And, and it's, if, especially if it's not really worth all that much. Uh, third is borrow, don't own when possible. And then finally, fourth, and this is a really important one, is that it is far better to mentally de-own something than being forced to declutter it. So just, it's a mental game, you know? Just figure out how to mentally step back, convince yourself you don't need to own that anymore, and then it's not becoming a decluttering chore. So we're gonna get more tips from Sheila. We're gonna get tips on how to declutter. We're gonna get tips on how to de-own. And Sheila's gonna tell us uh, maybe how to make a little money while we do it. Oh. Wow, I'm sad to hear that you didn't make any money on your baseball card. Like 24 then. bucks, yeah. not bad, or You could have had a Jose Canseco, a Yogi Berra mm -hmm. in there somewhere, but sounds like you just didn't. Uh, well, I had a Mark McGuire rookie. That was, okay, the, big, okay. that was the big one in the 85 set. Well, yeah. Absolutely. All right, well, we have a lot to talk about. I know for me, it's hard to get rid of clothes, my wardrobe, because you never know if you're going to gain weight, lose weight. Yep. So we're gonna find out tonight, maybe you have a tip for us maybe there's something that always gets you keeping you from decluttering your life we want to hear about it we have so much to talk about we're going to take a quick break though you could be a winner you see there goes that qr code right there in your screen you can scan it right now that is for our second chance giveaway we also have five carry-all totes for lucky on-air callers and we invite you in on this conversation. The number is 877-283-7570. Special guest, estate sales expert, Sheila Whitlock is going to join us to take your questions. We want to hear your comments. We want to invite you into this conversation. You're a big part of the show. We love when AARP comes to town. More right after this, stay with us. Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm a professional organizer and I've worked with a lot of clients on some big downsizing projects. If you're about to embark on a large downsizing project, such as you've just inherited a bunch of stuff from your parents, or you're downsizing from a large home to a smaller home, let me tell you about the layers of decluttering. The first layer of decluttering is going to be the low hanging fruit, the easy decisions. You've got the trash, the dusty stuff, the rusty stuff, the broken things. After that first layer, you've probably made a nice dent, but it's time for the second layer. Some time may have passed and you're revisiting the same space or the same stuff. Now you're getting into things that you forgot you had, things that you haven't used, things you have to remind yourself why you have it. Layer number three, it's a tough one. Sentimental items, boxes of memorabilia, papers or photos that take time to go through. These items are gonna have strong emotions attached to them. Especially if there's grief involved, you're gonna need time to heal. So keep revisiting as you're healing and be patient and kind with yourself. Hi, my name's Kristen, I'm a professional organizer, and if you have an organizing project and you don't know where to get started, here's the top five places you can start. Set a timer. Sometimes we just need to get started and create some momentum. Time's up, you're done. Start with the smaller spaces, a drawer, a shelf, that way you can start to warm up those decision-making skills for the bigger projects. Also, if you can complete it from beginning to end, 
it's gonna build decluttering confidence. Create a little sanctuary for yourself. Just a place where you can clear out the clutter quickly. You have a place where you can clear your mind. Also, you can refresh and reset and feel like you can create some separation from all the clutter elsewhere. Start by picking one category. It could be trash, clothes, or books. If it's a massive project, you're gonna to wanna to start with your large storage spaces because, well, that's the backbone of your home, garages and basements. Things are gonna sift and filter into those areas and you're gonna want a lot of room for staging. She really knows what she's talking about, doesn't she? Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. We are so glad you are with us tonight. Do you need to downsize or declutter? How about streamline or simplify? Well, you have come to the right place. Estate sales expert Sheila Whitlock joins us now to take your calls. And maybe you have a declutter tip to share or you want to share why decluttering is challenging for you. We want to invite you in on this conversation. Maybe you can tell us what you do with all the things that your kids don't want. We have a giveaway as well. We're giving away five carry-all totes to lucky on-air callers. Please pick up the phone, give us a call, join the conversation, 877-283-7570. And if you're not a winner tonight, you can enter AARP's Second Chance Sweepstakes at aarp.org slash aarp live or scan that QR code right there on your screen to enter. Now, one tote will be given away each month with a winner announced during next month's program. And we are going to announce last month's winner a little bit later on in the show. So stick around for that. We love having our friends from AARP here in town with us. Sheila Whitlock joins us now as promised. Sheila, you've been doing estate sales for a long time. What's the number one issue or reason that people have when it's time to get rid of the things that they have for a long time? Why do they still hold on to them? emotions. Um, it's uh, things that from their past when they're going through things, um, you know, their mother gave them this, their father gave them that, and it's just hard to let go of your history. Yeah, it can be very challenging, especially because you don't know how much longer you're going to have people in your life. We just never know how much time that we have. Mm -hmm. And so planning accordingly, getting those things out, how, how do you really assess um, if there's somebody that gave you something meaningful, what kind of questions do you need to ask yourself before you do get rid of it or decide to hold on to it? Does it make you smile every day? Mm. Is it something that you enjoy? We had a family once that she collected Hummels with her mother um, and she had 48 of them and she didn't want them all. So I said, pick out the four that made you have the smile the most while you were um, shopping. And that's what she did and we sold the rest. So it comes down to joy in many mm -hmm. cases. Absolutely. Now, if you're a very joyful person such as myself, <laughs> <laughs> I think that can make it even harder because for me, like every little piece of a Bible, anything that has to do with Jesus, mm -hmm. I want to hold on to. But right. I know that there's certain things that, that I can probably pass down or or maybe get rid of it. But what do you do in those situations when, when so many things bring you joy? Well, I mean, I have a hard time with it too, so I can't, I probably shouldn't <laughs> be the one doing this. But, <laughs> but um, you you just have to pick out what's what's what you love the most, you know? And in some cases you just keep it. I mean, I, I tell people all the time, this is your history, this is it. Once it's gone, it's gone. So you have to make that decision, you know, how much it means to you. Mm. And then how much does your peace mean to you mm -hmm. as well? Exactly. Because you don't want to have that clutter around. All right, let's find out what our viewers have to say tonight. 877-283-7570 is the number to call and join our conversation. We're going to Virginia tonight to speak with Pete. Thanks for joining us, Pete. Go right ahead. Hey, uh, well, thank you for letting me come on. Uh, every couple of years, my wife will rent a small the smallest roll out, roll out dumpster and we'll put it into the driveway. And it forces us because of that financial commitment to really look at what we've got in the house. And you would think once would be enough, but it, it simply isn't. I mean, you go through your stuff, you find a lot of stuff that you haven't used in a long time, but you also find a lot of stuff that was not a great purchase is just taking up space and would be something that your family would have to clean up after you're gone. And it, it has helped us so much. And what got us started on this when my father-in-law died, or was actually when they were going into nursing facilities, we had to clean out their house and we cleaned out three dump trucks load of various things from the house that truly had no value. And it made us think about trying to organize and make it easier on our daughter before it got to be too late. 
What are your thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> when I see a dumpster, when I go to do an estate sale, I want to cry because half the time we don't call it stuff, we call it treasures. And all those treasures that you're putting in the dumpster could make you money. Um, you would be amazed at what people buy. You would be amazed at how much you make when you have an estate sale. Um, instead of putting that in a dumpster to go to a landfill, put it in an estate sale and, and um, you know, have things repurposed, have people find joy with it. I love that. Yeah, you know, I, so I, it, this is an interesting, Pete brought up an interesting issue because we had a bunch of broken um, children's things, items, when, when my kids were young. And so my wife and, uh, and my two kids went out of town and I got one of these little dumpsters. And the interesting thing is I filled one of these little dumpsters with broken bikes and broken dollhouses and stuff that I knew no one would care if I put it in this dumpster. They came back, they never noticed. It was a week, it was a week. <laughs> I filled a dumpster full of stuff. So I think, you know, uh, to Pete's point, there are probably things in everyone's house that are truly garbage, right? And, and dumpster worthy. But I think, Sheila, you make a very good point. Some of those sentimental items, you know, we held an estate sale and, and whether it's dishes, you know, that you don't think there's any value to, but mm -hmm. somebody's like, oh my God, that's one of my matching sets. You know, I'll check, I'll, I'll, I'll buy some of those. Exactly. Um, so I think it's different strokes for different folks. Yeah, absolutely. You've got to kind of figure out, though, what actually has value. And so we're going to ask you more about that coming up. But we want to go back to the phones. 877-283-7570 is the number to call and join our conversation tonight. We have a very important topic. We are talking about decluttering and the psychological components that surround it, why it's so hard for people. Michelle from Minnesota, thank you so much for joining us. You are a winner. Congratulations to you. Go right ahead with your question. Thank you. Well, my my problem is that I think I have paper that multiplies paper and projects. I go to bed and I have piles here and there. And I mean, I'm being facetious, but it's really hard for me to minimize um, paper because there might be something important in there. Or there's an article I want to read or there's legal stuff that needs to be gone to, and I could really use a plan for how to tackle that and be accountable, get rid of cards that I've kept, mementos and that sort of thing. It, it feels kind of choking, actually. <laughs> so I would love some suggestions. I'll let Sheila figure out whether some of those cards may have some value, but I can tell you what she's talking about. Papers. You said legal papers, there may be tax papers, there may be old credit card statements. Those things you don't want to keep, okay? Because that can end up in the hand of, of somebody who can use it to scam you, it could be fraudulent, it cost you a lot of money. That stuff you want to get out of your house and you want to shred it. Yes. So um, don't let that stuff stack up. Um, get those documents, taxes from 10 years ago, credit card statements, uh, health care issues, all that stuff that's got private, important information on it. If you're keeping that stuff longer than a year or two, you're keeping it way too long, you need to get rid of it and you need to shred it. That's right. And you know, you don't actually have to buy a shredder. There are many companies Absolutely. out there where you can just bring it all down. Yep. And you can trust them because you get to watch them shred it right, right before your eyes. <laughs> well, and I, I'd also suggest, too, every state office at ARP usually has a, a free shred day where people can come and just get rid of all their shredding for free. So check out with your state yeah. office. Yeah, for those of you that are viewing from Vermont, we'll be at uh, Ben & Jerry's in South Burlington this coming Wednesday doing <laughs> our first uh, shredding event of the wow. season. Wow, so. and you get a scoop while you're there as uh, well. We have a quite gotten that far with Ben and Jerry's, but we want to thank them for thank giving you. us their large parking lot. Yeah, huge, huge props to Ben and Jerry's. That's awesome. Yeah. Sheila, what are your thoughts there? So going back to treasures, <laughs> which we call them a lot, um, your postcards, your cards, um, love letters. People love to buy love letters. Some people huh. collect them just to read them because there's the history in the love letters. So that kind of thing has got a lot of value to it. And, and don't throw them away. Find another sale that maybe you could tack on to and sell them that way or take them to an antique mall. Mm, well, we need to be writing yeah. more love letters, I feel like, mm -hmm. to one another this day and age. <laughs> I love that. Thank you so much for that call. Congratulations to you, Michelle. That leaves a line open for you tonight, 877-283-7570. You could be a winner. We're going to Arkansas next, where Tori joins the conversation. Go right ahead, Tori. 
Good evening. I um, have a question about estate sales. How would you go about setting up an estate sale, um, finding a reputable company, or also what is the percentage usually that estate sales will charge you when they have the sale? Okay, finding a reputable company. I'm sorry. I'll go right ahead. Okay. Yeah, I just... Okay, finding a reputable company. Um, what I would do is find the comp some companies that are in your area. You can go to estatesales.net or estatesales.org, and it has a list of companies in your area. And then I would go and visit those estate sales and see how they treat their customers that come into to these homes because those same people are going to be coming into your home. And so um, then as far as percentages goes, everybody's varies. It can be anywhere from 30% to 50%. It just depends on the area you're in. Depends on the amount of work they have to put in getting your estate sale ready. Okay, so read the reviews. Yeah. Good question. <laughs> Excellent yeah. question. And that leaves a line open for you, 877-283-7570. I know that the two of you get all kinds of questions coming in from members in your areas. If they have a question about an estate sale, is there somewhere that you direct them? Or, or what do you usually advise people when they are finally ready to get rid of some of that clutter? Well, I usually, if, if someone, um, especially if they're transitioning, right, they're transitioning from their home to maybe um, nursing care or assisted living or something, um, I usually have them call your local area agency on aging because they have a lot of resources and they have um, access to estate, uh, people that do estate sales, as well as they can contact sometimes the actual uh, home that you're going to has a estate sale person that they work with that, that can work with you to kind of uh, you know help you out in that respect. So I think the your local area agent local area agency on aging that's a mouthful, yeah. but your AAA a lot of A's. <laughs> yeah your AAA <laughs> is probably a great first step when when it comes to this uh, the estate sales. Okay, and you got some tips on decluttering for us, as I understand it. Some tips on downsizing and decluttering. Yeah, I mean, look, you know what Brad said. I'm you know I. You know, I'd opt for sometimes maybe opt for the large trash can, but I'm learning tonight from <laughs> Sheila that maybe I put some stuff in that uh, that I shouldn't have in the past. But downsizing tips, um, you know, you want to recognize you want to recognize your feelings. You know, um, as Sheila's been talking about, there's a huge emotional attachment to some of this stuff. So um, talk to a friend, talk to a counselor, talk to a family member. Don't try to do this by yourself. Um, focus on what you gain, not what you're losing. You know, that's another real way to sort of flip this around. And if you're moving to a new community, you're moving to a new neighborhood, engage. Don't isolate yourself. Make new friends. Find new uh, hobbies. You know, join the pickleball club. Yeah. Um, and all that stuff will lead um, to being able to sort of sort through all this. And I think that that's, again, a lot about not isolating. So again, Start with the least emotional area of your home first. You know, for me, that would be my basement because I have, other than the boxes and a bunch of stuff, I don't even know what's in there, but not my bedroom, you know, not my living room where there are pictures of my, of my family and my, you know, my old 1969 turntable, which I would never <laughs> want to give away to anybody else. And if I had to, it'd be horrible. Even though it's um, collecting dust. So yeah, so, so again, start with the least emotional places um, and then you can work your way up the more comfortable you get. And again, do it with a friend or a family member. I love that. Now we all have questions. Were you ever a DJ and do you play pickleball? So we wonder these things about <laughs> yeah, you, Greg. Never a DJ and I've uh, managed not playing pickleball yet. Yeah. I play tennis and I have that little racket. Doesn't make any sense to me. So. Thank you. I love pickleball. Yeah. Dana from Wisconsin joins the conversation now. Thank you so much for joining us, Dana. Go right ahead. All right, thank you for taking my call. I just had a question too about how can we help someone who is needs to and wants to declutter and downsize, but they don't really want to, but you know it's the best for them? How can you help someone? That's a tough one because until someone is ready to, it is very, very hard to get them to. Um, you know, I've, I've dealt with a lot of um, elderly people and their children will say, well, mom needs to do this, mom needs to do that. Mom doesn't have to do anything that she doesn't want to do. So maybe start small. Start, say, okay, mom, let's go to the linen closet. Let's pull out of the linen closet what we think we can do something with and just do small projects with her so that at least she feels like she's not just being 
you know, somebody's just taken over her life because it's hard when you get older. I think it's even hard when you're younger and then the older you yeah. get. <laughs> it seems true. like it just gets That's harder true. and harder. And, and again, if you're, if you're doing it with a family member mm -hmm. or a friend, they can help you through that process a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it's sort of doing this stuff in a vacuum or isolated can make it far more painful and more painful than it needs to be. Uh, I love that. You know what, Dana, congratulations. You are a winner tonight, and that leaves a line open for you. We still have three carry-all totes to give away, plus that second chance giveaway. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. And you have a rule of five to share with us, right, Brad? Yeah, so Dana was talking about how do you help someone who doesn't want to act. And there is this rule of five because I think taking small steps is really, really important because if you take a, if you have small victories, then it's easier to kind of continue and it's easier to build momentum. So um, there's this thing called the rule of five. And the idea is to take five minutes or five things and declutter. Um, and so let's start going through these. So when you walk into a room, Put away five things. So you're talking, someone talked about all this paper sitting around, right? So take those magazines, everything but the ARP magazine. Yeah. You know, <laughs> get, rid of, get rid of those magazines. <laughs> get rid of the old New Yorkers and all the other things. And, and, um, and if you get rid of five of those things in small chunks, it makes it manageable. The second one is devote, each hour devote five minutes to decluttering. And so when you put these two things together, if you were just to do this once, once a month, you know, over, uh, if you do this once a month, you will have a couple hours of decluttering or you will have put away 150 things throughout the year. And so, you know, it, again, it just, it adds up after a while and it makes the whole task manageable. So uh, I think Dana brought up a really good point and, you know, I, I don't, don't go big with it. We, were we did some spring cleaning earlier this year and we, we took the least sentimental part of our house, which is the linen closet. And you know what I did? I used advice from our last decluttering show, <laughs> which is a woman called, a, called our show. And she said, put your uh, linens together in, um, in a pillowcase. Yeah. And then she said, label the pillowcase. Mm -hmm. And then so it's all together. And so now we have these really nicely lined up pillowcases with all of our linens. And it was because of a caller that called into the show that we did it. But it was a small thing, and it made us feel really organized. And protected from moths, you know. It, yes. I love that. We get the greatest tips from our viewers. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. Jerry joins us from my home state of California. Thanks for joining us, Jerry. Go right ahead. Well, I'll repeat what I said earlier. I always remember who liked some of my little cluttered up junky stuff, vases and antique little junk. And if they come next time they visit, they'll usually go look at it and they, they really like it. Well, I'll remember who they are and call them up when I decide to clean out a bunch of stuff and they'll come pick it up and they're very happy and I'm glad to get rid of it. And that's about it. That seems like a lovely way to do it. You know, <laughs> it does seem um, like an easy way to do particularly it. Particularly if somebody like Jerry's really got a good memory. So if he knows that two or three people like a couple particular things and he can get <laughs> back in touch with them. I mean, these are all good ways to do it. And again, I think what Jerry's doing is staying engaged, mm -hmm. you know, and that part makes him feel good. And he feels good about giving some trinket or some antique away to somebody who was in his house at some point and said mm -hmm. that they really love that mm -hmm. item. So that part of it makes getting rid of stuff much easier and mm -hmm. much less painful. Oh, it's better to give yeah. than to receive, especially if you've got a house full of things that exactly. you don't yeah. need. You might make some friends that way yeah. as you're talking about relationship building. We're going to go to Alabama where our next winner joins us. Congratulations, Dale. We're so glad to have you with us. Go right ahead. Hey, thank you for taking my call. It's a great show as always. Uh, quick question. Do you have any liability for people who come to your estate sale um, if they fall down or get hurt? And, and, and is there specialty insurance you could buy or should you buy to cover these situations? Absolutely. Any, any um, accredited estate sale company should have liability insurance. Absolutely. And they should be licensed with their state as well. And if you're hiring someone, I would, I would ask about that. All right, excellent question, and congratulations again to you, Dale. Debbie from Oklahoma joins us next. Thanks for joining us, Debbie. Go right ahead. 
Yes, thank you for having me on air. I was uh, a while ago. He answered a question for me, and it, it was so nice to hear it because I always thought that I had to keep my important papers, like taxes and important insurance files and stuff like that, seven years. But he said two years, and I thought, wow. <laughs> and so that that was good to hear. And uh, I was interested in uh, asking you about an estate sale or a rummage sale because I'm moving from a 4,080-something square feet home into a 1,500 uh, uh, 1, square feet. And uh, my children suggested that I just get rid of everything and then, you know, start with the middle place and and build it with what I need, and then just forget all this other stuff. But that's so hard to do. Is it easier to have an estate sale or just have, like, a big rummage sale and me run it myself or have somebody come in and do the estate sale? That is my question. Hiring an estate sale company is the smartest thing you can do. Um, when you try to run an estate sale by yourself, you have so many emotions tied to it. People are going to say mean things. They're going to not know that you're the owner, perhaps, or they feel like you, um, they don't feel like asking you for extra discounts or, you know, or about an item. But when you have an estate sale company, we know the value of things. We know um, that you as a homeowner may not think this little bee plastic toy is worth anything, but it could be worth $15. So we know the value. That's, that's where we bring our expertise. And, um, and then we handle everything for you. And then you also handle the marketing as well, everything, right? And everything. so that's a big piece of it, how yep. to drive people to an yep. estate sale. Absolutely. Um, and so if you get a reputable estate sale company, they do a lot of that marketing, which right. is really Absolutely. important. What strikes me too is the expertise, like your ability to say, you know, that postcard might get you 30 bucks, yeah. which is the kind of thing that might end up in the recycle bin oh, you know, exactly. super, super quick. Uh, yep. And I was also struck by the thing you said to the, to the other, to the earlier caller, which seemed something I hadn't thought about, which I thought was a great question, which is these people need to be licensed, yep. bonded, insured, registered with the state, much like any other business you would be investigating that would be coming to your home Absolutely. and doing something for you, if they're fixing your roof or mm -hmm. uh, putting in a new driveway. So I just wanted to reiterate that seemed like a really important point. Because they're going to be in your drawers. Sure, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're going to be doing yep. everything. Deep so. in those drawers. <laughs> yeah, looking exactly. for everything they can. You know what, this is such an important, timely conversation, too, because I think so many of us right now, five to seven dollars for a gallon of milk uh, we're all looking for ways to earn extra mm -hmm. income so important to have this conversation we're going to pause for a quick break but we're taking more of your calls giving away carry-all totes to more lucky on-air callers give us a call 877-283-7570 you could be a winner tonight also you see that qr code it says scan me go ahead and do so and that will enter you into the second chance giveaway more rural america live with aarp right after this Hi, my name is Kristen. I'm a professional organizer. And when you're downsizing, it's all about asking yourself the right questions. If I start downsizing a lot, will it lighten the burden on my children in the future? Are my kids really going to want this? Do these items represent my current interests and who I am now? Is there someone out there that would value these a lot more? If it's sitting around just collecting dust, do I really value it? Welcome back to Rural America Live with AARP. We still have carry-all totes to give away. But first, it's time to announce last month's second chance winner. Drum roll, please. From Albuquerque, New Mexico, we congratulate Bina S. And congratulations to you. Thank you so much for joining us on this program. Remember, if you don't get on air tonight, you can still be a winner. All you have to do is visit aarp.org slash aarp live and good luck to you. But if you do want to get on the air, you still have a chance to win. And our next caller is a winner. Louise of Tennessee, congratulations to you. Go right ahead. Yes, hello. Hello, Louise. Thanks for joining us tonight. Go right ahead. Thank you so much. I have a comment tonight um, about the uh, decluttering. Um, me and my husband have almost been married about 20 years, uh, and I'm finding out we just don't need a lot of that stuff. <laughs> and uh, I told my husband, uh, if we don't use within one or two years, 
it's time to get rid of it and just be a blessing to someone or just give it to good goodwill or pass it along to the store store or consignment shop. Or uh, better yet, we can just have a Rami sale and pay off some bills. I found out the older we get, we just don't need all that stuff. And it's just like a freedom. It brings peace when you declutter. God, it really you so does. Much. You know, I, I love the one to two year. I love the one year yeah. rule for clothes, you know, and I do feel like she makes a very good point about donating those old clothes to Goodwill and, and allowing someone else to use them. But if you haven't worn a piece of clothing in over a year, that thing is either out of fashion or it's just mm. something that's not, you know, you're not going to wear down the road. So it's a great piece of advice from Louise. I subscribe to it myself. I also subscribe to another rule, which is you buy something new, something else has to go. Oh. Do you do that? I don't do that. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm. Man, you must drive your family crazy. <laughs> I absolutely drive my family crazy, but it's a great rule. Yeah. One thing in, one thing. You yeah. buy new shoes, old shoes out. Yeah, I got to think about that a little more. I, I would also say, um, from the, the color raised another really important issue, which is um, just in decluttering in general when you get older. One of the things that we try to remind people about at ARP a lot. Is, is that if the clutter at least has to be organized, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because if it's put on the floor or it's in a dark hallway or you're putting it up a staircase, it can become a hazard, a slip and fall yeah, hazard. Right. And um, that can end in a very, very bad way. So if, you, if your house is full of stuff like this, you've got to make sure that it is organized in a way where you're able to move around and have the clutter not have a negative impact and create some kind of slip and fall. That's excellent, excellent point. We're going to go back to the phones. I want to give you the number to call, though. You still have a chance to win tonight, 877-283-7570. Iowa is where we're headed All next. Right, we Beth joins the conversation. Thank you so much for joining us tonight, Beth. Go right ahead. Yes, uh, thank you for taking my call. We're wondering what's the difference between an auction and an estate sale? Oh, good question. Very good question. So an uh, auction is where people bid on things. They start low and go to higher prices. For an estate sale, it's where they come to your home, everything is completely priced, and, um, and they, they can see, touch, and feel. Here in Tennessee, most of them like to see, touch, and feel. We do online auctions as well. We do well with them, but they still like to see, touch, and feel. So that's the difference. Can somebody, uh, if you've got a $30, Trinket, what if somebody says, can you negotiate on, on site in an estate Are sale and say, I'd like to give you 20 for that, but well, not 30, or is that not okay? You, we, we do negotiate. We, we have a discount system set up in place. So say we stay full price for the first five or six hours, and then uh, we drop to 20%, it. and then to 30, and then to 40. So you can put offers in on them, and we take offers the next day, um, because most people's offers are 50% or lower. Yeah. So we take them after 12 on, on that last day. Wow. So I'm curious about this auction question, because if you're just a regular person and you've got a home, what would you recommend to that person? Would you recommend an estate sale? Or at what point do you think you would recommend an auction for that person? With our company, when we use online auctions, it's when we don't have enough parking. You know, you can't, you've got to have only so many people can come into the home um, at, a, at a time and can park at a time. Or um, if it's a gated community, they don't allow a state sale. You know, we can do it that way. We can do set up appointments, but we generally do in, on, on site estate sales. Got it. Okay. Like but we have used the other. Thank you so much for that call. We appreciate you, Beth. We're going to Wisconsin where Carol joins us now. Thank you so much. Go right ahead. Well, I just want to make a comment on something I did with Downsize, and I've been married many, many years. And we have a lot of picture albums and also books from high school, my yearbooks. Uh, and what I did was I copied some of the stories from. Oh, Carol, did we lose you? Oh, I loved hearing about oh, no. that. But well, I think this was just getting good. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I understand, though, because with the hardcover and if she's making copies, you can actually you really reduce the size. Digital photo frames are also a very popular item these days. 877-283-7570 is the number to call. I will ask you, anything surprise you when it comes to you always see these items sell? We might be asking ourselves, do I have anything that might actually sell that I'm not aware of? One of the, the coolest things that we ever got, we were at a home in um, Old Hickory, 
and the lady was going to give all the stuff to the junk people downstairs. And my daughter <clears throat> found this electric clock and brought it upstairs, and it was actually a neon clock. And the lady was fussing at us because it was dirty, and we, we'll clean it up. And we sold it for three thousand dollars. Wow! And she was going to give it to the junk people. So <laughs> you've got to have an eye for things. Yeah. Any other items that we should have an eye for as we're kind of going through decluttering? You know, here's what I tell people when we're doing an estate sale: don't get rid of anything. Let the estate sale company be the judge of what is trash and what is not, because everything sells. They will ask you for the rocks in your yard. They, I mean, everything sells. Use pillows, sheets, towels. So I know when you're decluttering, that's a whole. Another thing, but when you're getting ready for an estate sale, get out what you're wanting to keep and, and let us do the rest of it. Yeah. So having, having gone through this estate sale process, there is, if I'm not mistaken, a cleaning process before the estate sale, right? So mm -hmm. you're supposed to get rid of trash. I mean, help us walk us through because now you're, what I'm hearing is we think there's a lot more trash than you think there is. Mm -hmm. And so what... What is the line between trash and gems that you could sell? So what we tell people is to get out your personal papers, get out, um, but leave the magazines, leave the newspapers. People like to, to read that kind of stuff, especially if it's back from the 60s and 70s. Um, to us, people repurpose things. They take old pieces of metal and, and repurpose that. They, it, there's, there's nothing we don't sell. I mean, I can't stress that enough that let us be that judge. And who is your predominant clientele? I, I do wonder about that as well. Older people, younger people, a, a mix thereof? It's just a whole mix. It, it really is. It, it, every, every, we take on everybody. I mean, it, we, just everybody. You ever tell anybody you might be better off having a garage sale? <laughs> <laughs> Once in a blue moon, I, I'm known for taking on the small people. I've done a house trailer. I'm known for, I mean, because in my business, with my heart, everyone needs help. And, and I hate turning someone down. I hate it worse than anything. So it's rare that I do. Wow, excellent. Pete yeah. joins us now from Illinois. Thanks so much for joining <clears throat> us tonight. Pete, go right ahead. Yes, um, on the things that wouldn't sell on an estate sale, would you prefer giving it to like uh, Goodwill or Salvation Army. And isn't it true that AARP is a big supporter of Planned Parenthood and abortion? So, so and um, I'm very fortunate with my company that we have two or three clear out people that I refer to the customers at the end of the sale with what's left. And they come in and whisk it away so that you come into an empty house. If that's what you choose, you can, have, you can donate it to somebody, you can have... Um, your own garage sale, but but I have, I'm fortunate to have that. Yeah, I, I can you just shout out the name of your company if you don't mind? Estate Sales by Sheila. <laughs> Check it out. Online. Easy to remember. It's very easy to remember. I do I do want to just mention you know we we are the issues that we fight for are the 50 plus issues so it's Medicare it's Social Security um, issues outside of that we tend to we tend to stay away from so I don't know quite quite what Pete was referencing there, but I just wanted to make that clarification. Well, I understand. Um, I had a child at the age of 38 years old, and so I know it gets even harder and harder and harder once you're past 50 years old. Just want to throw that out there as well. Sharon joins us tonight from Florida. Thank you so much for joining us, Sharon. Go right ahead. Hi. Um, I have a lot of my mother's stuff. And I'm an older person. I'm 75, and I'm getting ready to relocate to another state. And all of her stuff is really nice, and it's been very hard for me to get rid of. And so I'm just trying to get some advice about what to do with it. Um, if, you're, if you're downsizing and moving to another state, I would have an estate sale. That's the perfect way. Our, our motto with our company is finding your treasures a good home. And so I would think that your mother would want somebody to have them and love them. Um, you know, so having a state sale is a great way to make you some money and pays your moving costs more than likely. You know? Ah, I like that. <laughs> pays your moving costs. How much can a person make at an estate sale? Oh, a lot. <laughs> <laughs> a lot. It just depends on what they have. You know, um, mid century's real hot. Well, it's getting a little warm right now or cool, but, but um, oh, I've, I've written checks for. Thirty, forty thousand wow. dollars. So, yeah. Wow! You know, I, they can and, make a lot. And I, I'll, I'll just uh, piggyback on what you're saying about estate sales because, as someone, you know, tastes change over the years, and mm -hmm. people have these big oak pieces of furniture that are beautiful. They're handcrafted. 
but maybe you don't have dish collections anymore. Younger people don't, and so it's tough to sell. I tried to sell one on Facebook Marketplace mm -hmm. and could not sell yeah. it. Well, we ended up doing an estate sale, and we got, I think, six, $700 for this yeah. piece. But I, again, as someone who's not an expert, I wasn't able to do it, but we did end up, uh, through a professional, getting some money for it. So, um, I, you know, you do, you do a great service, Thank and you. I would recommend to anybody to reach out to someone who's a licensed professional uh, because it's, you know, you're going to end up making some money. Well, right, yeah. and it just seems like you may be leaving a lot of money on yes, the table. Just exactly. listening to Sheila talk, like yeah. there are things that you have that you think belong in the dumpster where Sheila would tell you, no, they don't, and someone's going to buy them. So yeah. it, it, it does seem well worth it, particularly for a caller like this who is needing to get rid of a lot of stuff because they're moving to a different state. When we have gotten to a house with a dumpster, we have been known to go in and pull stuff yeah. out, <laughs> you know, so... We're kind of adamant like yeah, that. Right, right. <laughs> for a reason. For exactly. a good reason. We're going to Nebraska next where Monica joins us tonight. Thanks for joining us, Monica. Go right ahead. Yes, thank you for taking my call. Um, I'm concerned about books. I have a lot of books. And I think <laughs> I'm still going to read them. <laughs> and so I don't know. I need to get rid of them, get rid of some of them, but I don't know. How? Who would be? So I would contact one of your local estate sale companies, and they should know somebody that buys out books. They, that would be the best way to start it. And for those books that don't get purchased through an estate sale company, if you have a local library in your community, that, yeah. Yeah. they will generally take all of those books mm -hmm. um, and gladly find them a home so that other people will read them. Don't throw your books away. Somebody wants to read oh, those yes, books, they do. either in the public library or they'll pay for them. Mm -hmm. I love that. You know, it's interesting, though. Are there other ways to maybe get those books and get them into a smaller space? What I'm sure the two of you have some books. I'd like to hear what you do with your excess books, Brad. Well, we, we you know, we've donated them to the public library. I was just going to say that before Greg mentioned it. And, um, and we, the other thing that we did which um, I found value from is cookbooks, because we, we used to collect cookbooks, mm -hmm. but we found ourselves, this, this rule, right, this one or two year rule, we hadn't opened a cookbook in yeah. two years because <laughs> we because use all these even, online recipes, yeah, you open, right? Yeah, you open and so I just went to, I just collected all of them, and I mean like three or four boxes mm -hmm. that were in our kitchen, took them to the public library, and now hopefully someone else is getting value of them, mm. but we have now more space in the kitchen that we know what to do with, which I, is great. Yeah. I, I've been to a few states. I, was, I'm, uh, I collect uh, vinyl records. I collect mm -hmm. and have for many years and have well over 2,000 of them. And I've gone to estate sales and bought some records where I know the estate sale person has no value, doesn't know the value of the exactly. record. Because, you know, I've purchased, a, a, frankly, a Bob Dylan record for $5, oh. which is actually worth anywhere from three yep. to $400. Wow. So for those of you out there that do collect things like vinyl records or books going to estate sales, the estate sale person can't know everything. Yeah. They right? know a and lot. They know a lot, <laughs> but there may, some things may slip through the cracks. <laughs> And you may find something of real value that you might get a deal on. And be your own advocate, just yep. like AARP always talks about. Okay, so I will ask you, is there a market for books? Are you able to resell books for yes. a significant up, up price? Or, Absolutely. Um, and then what are the top sellers that people may have sitting in That's their house right now? For books. Um, um, the for sets everything. sell really well, the, and the vintage sets. Um, vintage books sell really well. Um, hard covers. Hard right? covers, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Anything yeah. back before the 50s. What about just generally speaking? About books? Or no, um, oh. items. Like, uh, what we were talking earlier, concert t-shirts, yeah. uh, vinyl, um, uh, baseball cards. If you've got those uh, Hot Wheels, they go really well. Hot Wheels? Uh, really? Yeah. Oh, I got yeah. tons of those. We had a sale earlier this year that we did 13000 almost wow. in Hot Wheels. So, oh, my yeah. goodness. So they go really well. Um, Toys. So toys are that are hard. In, toys are hot. So wow. people that are in like that have a narrow obsession for collecting, mm -hmm. estate sales are the perfect place for them Absolutely. to wind up, and they may see twenty hot vintage wheels. clothing. Yeah. We were talking about that right. earlier. Well, those vintage toys you're talking about, those those high quality metal vintage mm -hmm. tractors and oh, toys yeah. and things. I know um, they there was a hot ticket items yeah. at least at home in Iowa. Yeah. All right, Maurice. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're glad to have you on. Really appreciate you. Go right ahead. Well, thank you. I've um, 
I have trouble with stacks. Uh, if I have a stack of, say, magazines and books and letters that I thought I was going to read again, I just I don't know how to disassemble that stack. How do I know how to, uh, you know, break the stack down? I struggle with that too, Maurice. I was telling uh, Brad before the show tonight that, you know, I have New Yorker magazines that go back three or four years now, and I'm, you know, I keep thinking, well, I'm going to read that one from 2019 at some point, but, you know, and the stack just gets bigger and bigger and bigger, mm. and I'm finding it difficult to, you know, to get rid of them because I think somehow I'm going to go back through them and that's simply not going to happen, but I've had trouble getting rid of them too. Reader's mm -hmm. Digest, another one that people like to collect. Yeah. All right, we want to make sure that I give everybody a chance to share their final thoughts tonight. We had such a great round of calls. We always appreciate hearing from you. Sheila, what are your final thoughts for our viewers? Um, don't throw away anything. That's what I can keep honing into everybody. Let the, so, the state cell company that you're going to choose make those decisions for you. Okay, and we can trust an estate sale, a representative, a company, as long as we do the research, we find out if they're accredited, we find Correct. out that they have good reviews, like you pointed out. So mm -hmm. you really offered some valuable information. Thank you. We appreciate that very much. Thanks. Gentlemen, we'll start with you. Well, Greg. I learned that estate sales are clearly the way to go tonight, and I did not <laughs> know that uh, an hour ago. So I've been persuaded by Sheila. I would also say um, to make sure that when you are decluttering or putting together an estate sale that you have some family around or some friends around so that you can deal with some of the emotional aspects of parting with stuff that really means a lot to you. I think that's really important. And you brought up such a great point about just making sure that you have space because we always feel like we are mightier than we might be, especially as we get older. And so making sure that we don't have that clutter impacting a place where we could fall or, or would actually right. hinder us from getting through a door. Super important, Brad. Well, Christina, that is a great transition to my final thought here, which is it's important to declutter, and we've learned that today. Um, but it's also important to, if you want to stay in your home as long as possible, there are ways to retrofit your home. And at ARP, we provide those resources. So there's something that we call a home fit guide, and that's going to be on AARP, or it's going to be on ARP.org slash AARP live. And so what this home fit guide does is it gives you these tips that once you declutter and once you clear these paths and it's safe, you can now carpet your stairs, for example. You can change your doorknobs to make sure they're levers and so they're easy to open. Uh, lower your microwave. Um, and so there are a number of tips that you can take. And at the, the result here is we know at ARP that people want to age at home in their community yes. and stay close to family. And so the longer you can do that and help yourself by doing some of these home, getting this home fit guide and really working on your home, of course, after decluttering it, after calling Sheila and <laughs> getting as much money as possible, <laughs> then you're going to be in great shape. So ARP.org slash AARP live. And that's where you're also great going free to free resource. Go. Yeah, free resource, a wealth of information there for you. You can also enter that second chance giveaway. I want to thank you all so much for joining us. What an excellent program. Join us next month, June 20th, when AARP's social security expert will join us. Wishing you a beautifully blessed evening from all of us here at Rural America's Most Important Network.